Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Manscaped.com. They decided to let me know that they've engineered a sequel, a successor to the godly Lawnmower 4.0. Yeah, this is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes this so unique? Well, it's a next generation grooming masterpiece where they've got the next generation, next gen dual skin safe blades. Yeah, now they're accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and and an interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. Ladies and gentlemen, these upgraded blades absolutely mean business. You've got a grooming tag team match where the upgraded trimmer blades feature longer, wider, rounded teeth that cut through the hair with ease. And now, of course, it's kind of like getting your hands on two trimmers, but only paying for one. It's, 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 it's almost like a total win. Am I right or am I right? But of course, you may be wondering, Muda, I, I shave in the dark. Well, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, I sometimes do too and Manscapes there with the bigger, badder LED light. Ladies and gentlemen, they uphold the same features that they always have, rechargeable Lion batteries, RPM technologies for top-notch performance, and a travel lock for seamless portability, USB-C charging, and a three-level battery life indicator. And let's not forget the best part, it's waterproof, so you can use this in the middle of a shower. Lawnmower 5.0 is not just an achievement, it's a revolution. And if you want to be part of the 9 million men, head on over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today when you use my promo code SOG you get 20% off and free international shipping at checkout. That said, let's get to the video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar and hacking a PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah, it's surprisingly possible. Now ladies and gentlemen, I want to start off by basically talking about what is one of the coolest things and one thing that I like to do on my channel is obviously from time to time look at hacked systems, okay? Throughout my history, I've covered hacking a PlayStation 3, hacking the PlayStation 4, hacking an Xbox 360, hacking a PlayStation Vita, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, can I just say, is still God's greatest handheld, all right? I know people have their Nintendo Switches, the Steam Deck, the, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but I'm still a, uh, I'm still a uh, PS Vita lover, and I think this is probably one of the best handheld Sony's, Sony has ever made. Uh, the fact that they don't actually, you know, produce more of this is is just sad to think about. Now, the PlayStation 5 is one of the hottest gaming consoles ever, okay? And, uh, you know, for me, I enjoy the system. It's where I do m a lot of my gaming, really. Uh, I know that I have a strong PC setup, but honestly, I just kind of, at this point in my life, like to sit down, pop a disc in, wait like 20 minutes for it to install, pick up a gaming controller, and just play a video game. Now, that being said, the PlayStation 5 is not a perfect system. There is a lot of games on the PlayStation 5 that are locked to 30 frames per second without ever having a good reason to. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of my favorite looking games, and I just like to sit back, relax, and play it. I hate playing it on a PC, even with a controller. That's just a game that's made for the couch. Now, there is no way to play that game at 60 frames per second, whether you're on the Xbox or the PlayStation. But thanks to 60 frames per second patches, there have been modders who have unlocked the frame rate for Red Dead Redemption 2 and are now able to play the game at 60 frames per second, pretty much locked on a PS5, if you can hack it. Now, if you kind of whittle back to my PS4 hacking video, this is something that I showed, but obviously because the PS4 wasn't the most powerful system in the world, it couldn't run Red Dead Redemption 2, let alone any other open world game at a locked 60 frames per second. And that was because the CPU wasn't powerful enough to handle the open world game logic at 60 ticks a second. PS5, very capable of doing so. But you can't expect Rockstar Games to patch it, Sony to force a patch, so in reality, the community has to take matters into their own hands. Now, hacking a PlayStation 5 is actually surprisingly easy. So in this situation, I ended up getting a PlayStation 5 uh, and this one was the Horizon Forbidden West Bundle PlayStation 5, with a manufacturing date of July 2022. Now, I actually ended up picking this up because I did talk to uh, MVG about this, Modern Vintage Gamer, and uh, at the time, this was a PlayStation 5 that I picked up. I basically put it into the closet and forgot that I had it, just so that in the event of something like today, I could actually cover a hack. Unfortunately, in my situation, my, my, my PlayStation 5 is a little bit too young to get hacked. So let's actually talk about the process. You start up a brand new PlayStation 5 and you'll be greeted with Astro's Playroom and nothing else. It's a cute game that looks at the 
functionalities and the upgrades of a PS5, but forget all of that for a second. Click this gear on the top right and start connecting to the internet. Now, this is where you want to be really careful. The moment your PlayStation 5 even pings a server, the first thing it's going to do is start patching every single game on it, which is obviously in this case just Astro's Play World or Playroom. And uh, what it'll also do is try to download a system software update. Now, you do not want to update your firmware, okay? Because in order to hack a PlayStation 5 today, you need to be between the system firmwares of 3.0 and 4.51. How do you figure out what your firmware is? Well, if you go to the uh, systems and you go to your system settings, your console information, this string of numbers, uh, what's important is what I'm highlighting over here. If this is above 4.51, which in this case, for me, it's 5.10, then you cannot exploit your PlayStation 5 because the system firmware is too high and the patches that we'll be abusing have already been se secured by Sony. So if you have an exploitable PlayStation 5, what your next step is, is to actually go back to the internet settings, highlight the internet connection you just made, hit the little, uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know what this three line button is, okay, I'm gonna call it the start button. Once you click on that, go to advanced settings, go to the DNS settings, and enter the same DNS that I am putting onto the screen right here. What this DNS address will do is it'll actually prevent your PlayStation 5 from communicating with Sony servers. So this serves as a layer of protection because what Sony systems will constantly try to do is update to the latest firmware, which is exactly not what we want. You can actually confirm this by going back to the system settings console information and verifying that the PlayStation is not telling you that there is an update available. Because it has no idea. You literally have stuck knives into the eyeballs of the PlayStation. It doesn't know. It will never know. It can't know. So your next step is to go to the user guide. And once you actually open up the user guide, because of that DNS change that we made, it'll actually start loading up this page. Now, ignore the anime girl on the side. What this page is, is filled with exploits for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. But we're actually looking for the PS5. So with your controller, tap L2 twice and you'll open up a URL redirector. In the URL redirector, you want to enter a new exploit site. So I believe in this, I went to es 7 and site and once I went to this page, at the top row, you'll notice PS5. Clicking on that, one of the top left options, which is kind of escaping my head for a minute, you click on that, and if your PlayStation is exploitable, it'll first warn you that there's not enough memory in the system, hit OK. It'll reload the page a few times, but eventually it will launch a payload. And once this payload is launched, your PlayStation 5 is actually exploited. Now, this is a tethered jailbreak, which means that the moment your PlayStation 5 turns off and you power it on with a fresh cold boot, meaning that you're not in rest mode or anything, the PlayStation 5 will lose its hack and you'll have to repeat this entire process over again. Now, there is a channel known as Modern Warfare who produces some of the best hacking console videos that I can tell you. They are always updated, incredibly easy to follow, and if you found anything lacking in this video, that is a channel that I would highly recommend you go to. Now, this moment in time, we're gonna turn the attention over to an individual known as Illusion0001. Now, this is a brilliant individual who has created a program or he created a new repository known as Lib Hijacker. So what Lib Hijacker does, according to their explanation over here, is if you are running the current exploited firmwares, like 3.0, 4.51, you can download a later release from their page, uh, a Python script, if you will, that if you had the IP address of your PlayStation 5, which if you go to your connection settings, you can verify what your local IP address is. From any computer, you can run their Python script and actually send patches to your PlayStation 5. Meaning that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're playing things like Bloodborne, for instance, you can actually send a 60 frames per second patch that allows you to play one of the best Soulsborne games at an actual good frame rate. So again, there's multiple patches, such as Arkham Knight, for instance, running at 60 frames on a PlayStation 5, which 
If you ask me, one of the best ways to play the game, okay? But Arkham Knight has a really good PC port, and if you got a Steam Deck, you could probably just get 60 frames on that anyways. They've also got 60 frames for Crash Team Racing, Dragon Age Inquisition, Drive Club, which is, to this day, still one of the best looking PlayStation 4 games out there. You've got Gravity Rush 2, which is locked to the system, Order 1886, and of course, Last of Us Part 2, The Last of Us Remastered, and of course, the Uncharted games. Now, what's also really funny is Silent Hills PT, which is one of the scariest horror games that is still locked to the PlayStation 4, because of this exploit can be installed, from what I understand, onto the PlayStation 5, and you can actually preserve PT and run it at 60 frames a second. Again, how Konami still had let Silent Hills go to shit is saddening, but hey, at least they're working on a remake for two, so that's better than nothing, I guess. And because the PlayStation 5 supports up to 120 hertz systems displays, you can imagine that some games, if, you know, they're light enough, the PlayStation 5 can actually run 120 frame titles. So Bloodborne, which doesn't reach 120 locked, you can still go beyond 60 frames and get an even smoother play. Yeah, there's no PC version of Bloodborne, but eh, I guess it's better than nothing. Hell, even Demon's Souls, which is the PS5 system launch title, can go beyond 60 frames even in its 4K mode. Again, what these patches aim to do is turn off some of the limitations that Sony or the developers for these games have imposed to maintain at least some level of stability. So, okay, you might be like, Muda, okay, yeah, I can play some games at better frame rates, but what else can I do? Well, for one, you can actually have a dedicated internet browser on the PlayStation 5 versus trying to jerry-rig any web page into the user guide, which I believe Sony has kind of removed a all accessible internet browser just because of these exploits that really did take advantage of the PlayStation 4. And uh, you can install uh, you know, entire FTP applications and hopefully sometime down the future, you may be able to install even more intense homebrew. So things like emulators, for instance, now, if you have a PlayStation 5 that's actually beyond that hackable firmware right now that can run all these patches, don't fear, you can do some cool stuff still. If you have a PlayStation 5 that's up to firmware 7.60, which in this case, this was version 5.10, you can actually exploit a bug in certain PS2 remasters on the PlayStation 5. So for anybody that doesn't know PlayStation 5 games, there are some PlayStation 2 titles that run under an emulator for PS5. And because of how it actually emulates and reads memory, you can copy an exploited save from a hacked PlayStation 4 over to a PS5 by artificially signing it. And you can actually leverage a bug in the emulator where you can load in separate PlayStation 2 ISO files. Now the compatibility is kind of out there. It's not obviously as perfect as the PS3, PS4, or even a PC, obviously. But if you ever wanted to run custom PlayStation 2 games, well, the PS5 provided your under version 7.6, you should be able to play custom PlayStation 2 games underneath the system. So that's obviously a little fun bonus that you can have. Now obviously the security on a PlayStation 5 kind of mirrors that of a PlayStation 4 in terms of its design too. Obviously, Sony has spent a lot of money beefing up their security, but I don't think we're ever going to reach the level of security that Sony will have as compared to the Xbox, which leverages a lot of virtualization technology to really sandbox a lot of these potential exploits. That's not something Sony is doing, and I think that's honestly going to be the reason why these exploits will continue to exist on their systems. Now, that being said, hacking a PlayStation 5 is cool. It's still very much in its infancy. I mean, you're not able to turn this system into a gaming computer like the PS4. If you remember back to the time when we hacked a PS4, I was able to get Master Chief Collection working through Linux under a PlayStation 4. Insanity, if you think about it. But of course, I could also run emulators like RetroArch, actual PS2 ISO files on that system, and uh, yeah, but that's not something that I should expect from the PlayStation 5 anytime soon.
And before we talk about it, the word piracy, I'm not telling anybody or any of you how to install custom package files in the sense that you can pirate video games. That's not what this channel is about and that's not what I'm here to teach you. I don't wanna actually pressure Sony into like, A, taking legal action against this video or me, and I also don't want Sony to like really go hard on these exploits which they definitely will, let's be honest here. But I also don't want them to like nip this in the ass and use it as an excuse of piracy. I really do think hacking video game consoles are fun in the sense that you can extend the functionality of these systems even if the game developers, publishers, and the console owners don't want you to. Look, the PlayStation 5 is a great system, like the Xbox when you think about the price you're paying for the power that you're getting. But if you could just have total control over these systems, man, what I think console gaming would be a very, very massive proposition. And if you want to talk about hacking a system, I think what's more fun is buying an Xbox Series X or an S, running developer mode on it by paying like, what, $10? And running whatever emulators you want and any kind of code you want on your system. I think that's a little bit more fun and honestly more reasonable for the average person. A, you don't have to have a system that you can't ever play actual games with, and you have the option of having like an exploitable system. So I guess the real conclusion of this is, yeah, hacking a PS5 is cool and fun, but uh, right now it's a little bit in its infancy, so don't feel like you're missing out on too, too much. And if you have a system that currently can't be exploited, not the end of the world, put it in a closet, wait a few more months, maybe a couple years, and eventually you'll be treated with everything fun, and it'll be a rewarding thing for your patience. But I guess at the end of it, what I want to talk about a little bit too is in the last good exploitable system. Recently, I bought a PlayStation 3, a Checha model, which actually had the PlayStation 2 hardware built in. It was an expensive buy, but it came with a version old enough that I could actually exploit it really easy. And now I have a PlayStation 3 that I recently replaced the hard drive to a full terabyte. It's a hacked PlayStation 3, cleaned it up, and it has become one of my most mainly used consoles for the last couple months at this point. So aside from the Steam Deck, loading up a PlayStation 3 hacked is actually super enjoyable. You get access to a system that can run a bounty of amazing PlayStation 3 titles right off of the hard drive without ever touching that goddamn Blu-ray. You've got an amazing system that can emulate PS1 titles with actual razor sharp accuracy. You've got RetroArch on the PlayStation 3 that can pretty much emulate any console known to man within reason. And because I bought a fully backwards compatible PS2, I'm not emulating PS2 games. I'm running them as if they actually were run on a PlayStation 2, except running officially outside of HDMI with the actual PlayStation 3 and honestly giving me one of the best consoles, one of the best bangs for my buck. It is a system that can run pretty much everything. And that was honestly the last generation where gaming consoles were really fully exploitable. Alongside the PlayStation 3, hacking an Xbox 360 is its own rewarding right too. You get a whole bounty of classic Xbox games to emulate, amazing Xbox 360 titles to patch and mod around with, and of course the system is very capable of emulating almost every system out there. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hacking a PS5, is it possible? Very much so. Is it exciting that it's happening this relatively early in its lifespan? Yeah, it is. But of course, give it a few more months, give it a few more years, and it shouldn't be a, a shock that people can do some really crazy shit with a PS5. I think what I'm really excited for is the moment we can run Linux on a PS5 and actually, and I mean actually, run some real PC games on a, on a device like that. That'll be crazy to see. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty much gonna leave it where it's at. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.